Hello. In this video, we will talk about purchase implementation and best practices how to do this in the best way. Um, well, first of all, uh, as was described in the previous video, we should init our game building manager, and as soon as it got initiated, we can allow all our, our players to use purchase function. Uh, in this example, we do have just two items. One is consumable item, coins item, and non-consumable item, coins boost. So, uh, we will review how to implement purchase for the uh, our non-consumable item, coins boost. So, in our game building manager, we have the purchase function. So, uh, let's go right there. So, basically, our purchase function is simply calling the same purchase function in the Android and App Purchase Manager. But there is a really good uh, spot to lock screen uh, to be sure that your customer will not click any other button or just will return to previous menu. Just locking screen here is really good practice. As you remembered, uh, on initialization we were subscribing to the purchase event uh, and our own product purchase function will be called as soon as purchase flow is finished. It can finish successfully or non-successfully. It was, was finished non-successfully, then we should unlock the screen and tell Arc that something was wrong and ask him to try later. Of course, the purchase can be finished with fail due to internet connection or if the player is cancelled the purchasing by himself. And of course, you can find out as using the billing result, which actually, uh, which is contains fail code and fail message. Um, everything you need to find out what goes wrong. But if the purchase was successful, then we will go to our on processing purchase product. We do have our two products here, and currently we're talking about coins boost. So if customer is just purchasing the coin boost, all should we do is just unlock this boost and unlock our screen. That's it. Now let's talk about uh, consumable purchase, which is our coin items. Basically, we do pretty much the same. We're purchasing this coin item um, from do the call the same function from Android and App Purchase Manager uh, and basically go into the on product purchase it. When was it successful? Then go to on product purchase and purchase. Okay, so, uh, but here, instead of just unlocking Thompson or adding coins, we call the consume function and not unlocking the screen, that is really important. So, on a consume function, that is basically the same what is purchased function, we're just delegating the same call to the Android in our purchase manager, and we also subscribe it to the consummation event. So, um, if consummation was unsuccessful, then with the same unlocking the screen and notifying our customer. If it was successful, we're going to uh, on processing consume product. But the good thing is, is probably to try once again to consume the same product because uh, as soon as we got purchase it event, the customer already paid for it. Uh, so uh, if it was successful, then we can process our consumation and add some coins to our customer and of course unlock the screen. So that's it uh, for the consumable items. And so in previous video we were talking about updates to our data function. So as soon as you got your product details uh, you can find out what your customer currently has in his inventory. So uh, you should go over this inventory, analyze it and probably make some changes in our application. Uh, so if the inventory contains coins item, that is consumable item and it should be consumed. So if on our app initialization we do have this item in our inventory, this means that it wasn't consumed by some reason, uh, but customer already paid for it. So we should just consume this item. Um, if we do, you know, if we have some product like non-consumable product coin boost in our inventory, then we should just enable this boost right away if it wasn't enabled. Because point is, um, 
customer can purchase a uh, non-consumable item on one device and then run our game on other device. So on this other device we will get updated inventory, we'll see that some of items was purchased, like boosts, items, tracks, whatever, and then we should unlock corresponded item. So that's it. And that is all you should know about implementing in-app purchases in your game. So thanks for watching and good luck with the development.